Hi there, welcome to the Movie Review Mom YouTube channel. My goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision as to whether or not you want to spend time or money or both sometimes watching a specific film. So the specific film I'm reviewing today is called Muzzle. This crime thriller is now playing in theaters and also is available on video on demand on Amazon Prime and Vudu. The movie is rated R. It's an hour and 36 minutes. And my overall movie review mom grade is, drum roll, a B. I actually liked this movie overall, although there were bits and pieces, not so much, but I'm getting ahead of myself. And I'm going to give you an overview in a nutshell, and then I'll point out things I liked, things I did not like, interesting lines, funny lines, uh, tips for parents, themes worth talking about, and recommendations for other films that are sort of similar that you might also enjoy if you like this one. All right, you ready? Let's dive in. In a nutshell, the story is about a cop whose canine partner gets killed in the line of duty. After losing his dog, Jake Rosser plummets deep into the sinister underworld to uncover the truth about who might be responsible. The film was directed by John Stahlberg Jr., who also co-wrote it with Carlisle Eubank. So let me give you some quick tips for parents. Because there are dogs involved, uh, children might be upset when they see them get hurt or treated badly. Overall, I think the movie is not appropriate for kids because you see a lot of the uh, life in the gutter. So I'll just put it at that. There is profanity. There are lots of F-bombs. We see prostitutes, crazy people, and druggies living homeless on the streets. There's an explosion that kills people. There's some violence, blood, a little bit of gore. A variety of weapons are used. And there's lots of cigarettes and alcohol use. And then we just see uh, people get killed in various ways. And sometimes just, you know, bam, right there. So some of the themes that are illustrated well are cops, both human and canine, man's best friend, and that relationship that we have with our pets. Uh, specifically dogs. Man, when my uh, dog died just a couple of years ago, I cried and cried and cried for weeks because he was my little buddy. And anyway, I don't don't get me started. Anyway, uh, other themes are crime, healing, truth, PTSD, fentanyl and the drug cartel, vengeance, hurt people, hurt people, and uh, you know a little bit of uh, evil China involved in the story. You got to throw that in. Now, there were a lot of things that I liked, as I mentioned. So first of all, I've been a fan of Aaron Eckhart for years, and I usually like all of his movies. So I was interested to see what he was going to do in this one. His eyes actually are just like one of my son's eyes. And so I don't know, I feel motherly toward him, although I think we might be about the same age, or he might even be older. But anyway, and he's starting to age. He finally is starting to look a little bit older. Anyway, this movie is a study that shows how both his character and the dog are muzzled by past traumas and what they both do to try to overcome that. I also really like Stephen Lang as an actor. His characters that he plays in different movies always look like they have a long story to tell about their background. And that's the case in this movie as well. Other than that, the rest of the cast is good. You may not recognize anybody other than those two, however. The movie sh definitely shows a very ugly side of what's happening in America right now, which is just heartbreaking. The streets are filled with homeless people and tents surrounded by garbage and worse things. The story takes place in Los Angeles, which sadly has turned into a complete dumpster fire of a city. And I, I haven't been for years. And the pictures that I see that come in from friends who've been there, again, are just heartbreaking. The color palette in this film, I think, is good because it's dirty and grimy, perfectly representing the filthy underworld that the movie is about. You'll learn some German words because cops actually speak 
to their canine partners in German. I've heard that German shepherds are just one of the smartest dogs ever. When I was a little girl, everybody had German shepherds and then they kind of went out of fashion. I never had them. Um, my dad really loved Doberman pinchers. So we had a few of those over the years, but I've never had a German shepherd and uh, they are just a perfect police dog, I think. There is a really suspenseful scene with some action, a little bit of blood and killing and stuff, uh, but it utilizes very interesting camera angles. And I thought it well done because, you know, we've seen scenes like that a million times before. So what could this director do differently? Well, there are some different camera angles and the use of mirrors. And uh, I, I, anyway, I just, it held my attention. I really act actually really enjoyed that scene because of that. The ending is very sweet. Now you, you gotta kind of swim in the gutter there for a little bit until you get to the sweet ending. And when it first started, the last scene, I thought I knew what was happening and I was wrong and I was pleasantly surprised. And again, it was just kind of sweet. Now, some people will say, oh, well, that was really hokey, um, but that's okay. Time passed and things happened and then that's how things were resolved. All right. Now that being said, there were just a couple of things that I didn't like that could have been done differently or better. For example, this love interest that's in the story is a little bit odd. The woman is a nurse with her own set of emotional baggage, although we never really learn what was happening when these two, the protagonist and she, this nurse meet, she's crying, he's upset. We know why he's upset, but we really don't learn that much about her. But it's interesting because she's instantly attracted to him, even though he's been in the news, he's notorious for being violent uh, and he shows zero warmth toward her when they first meet. And so of course she'd be interested. You know, I'm like, Okay, I guess she's just desperate because no woman in her right mind would go for a man like that. You know, he's handsome, but you know, whatever. Anyway, she basically throws himself at him, vanishes for the majority of the movie, and then shows up towards the end of the movie with almost no interaction with the cop. We don't really see their relationship progress. They don't spend time really diving into their both of their emotional baggage, just things happen all of a sudden. And so I'm just kind of like, okay, well, there we go. <laughs> and then um, there's this main villain. There are a lot of, you know, bad guys uh, um, as you climb the heart hierarchy of evil and you finally get to this really bad guy, the villain, the main villain who's causing all these problems. And he just looks like a cartoon character. I thought he was ridiculous. I'm like, really? That's who they picked to you know, be the bad guy. I was like, okay. <laughs> so part of the movie is kind of clunky um, in terms of really deep plot. It's a guy who loses his dog and he wants to get revenge. That might remind you about a movie um, called John Wick. You have seen that one? Yeah, that one's amazing. Um, and by the way, if you haven't seen the fourth one and you've seen the other ones, you definitely need to see that one. It's just mind blowing. And talk about uh, action sequences, fight sequence. There are, there, I can't even think of any other movie that can top the choreography of the fight sequences in John Wick. But actually I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm going to give you some other movie recommendations. Um, but anyway, so when I watch movies, I always take notes. I write down funny lines and interesting lines simply so I can share them with you so you get a taste and feel of the movie, the dialogue, script, writing, and all of that. So I have them all on my written review at moviereviewmom.com so you can see them all over there, but I'll share just a couple of them with you right now. So there's a, a cute line where Jake, again, played by Aaron Eckhart, is talking to his dog and, um, you know, he sees something happen and he's looking around and then he sees the dog and he says to the dog, there's something you're not telling me. <laughs> and it's cute because he talks to his dog a lot, both dogs that he has. Um, and then there are some interesting lines. For example, uh, Jake, again, played by Aaron Eckhart, is talking to um, his superiors and they're they're worried about him because 
they're worried he's taking drugs or he's, he needs some anger management or some therapy to kind of work through all of his PTSD. And so he says, you asked if I struggle with anger. I don't. I let anger win a long time ago. And you see that simmering anger in him during the entire movie. And I think Aaron Eckhart did a really great job with his role. And then another detective who's really his best friend, uh, who gives him good advice, says to him, do what lonely people do, get a dog. Now, of course, he had just lost his dog, his partner, and he refers to that dog, not as a dog, but as his partner. And he's really suffering and struggling with that loss. And so with her advice, he goes and he gets another canine dog and they begin training and he develops this relationship with this other dog. And then Stephen Lang is also a mentor and a good friend to him and is the one that works with all of the cops who are training their canine partners. And he says to the class one day, your dog will become completely addicted to you. So don't abuse that power. And you see that he takes that relationship seriously. And I, I really liked that element of the movie. Now, if you want to see other movies like this about dog owners, I've got three that I want to recommend. The first one is called Megan Levy or Levy. I can't remember how they pronounced it in the movie. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I think it was about a military woman as opposed to a cop. One or the other, no, I can't remember. And she has a dog, I think she was military. Anyway, she has this dog that she works with and she loves this dog and things happen and she fights to be able to get this dog from what I remember. Anyway, it was really well done. And um, another old movie, an old Tom Hanks movie from back in the day is called Turner and Hooch. And he's a cop and his partner's a dog and they've got a cute relationship. It's way less dramatic and thorny than this movie. It's more of a comedy, but you do also see that working relationship between the dog, I mean, the canine partner and the human cop. And then the last one, as I mentioned earlier, is John Wick. And it all starts because someone kills his dog. Anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me. If my reviews are helpful, give them a thumbs up and subscribe. That helps to spread YouTube magical fairy dust all over my channel so that it can grow so that more people can find it. And my goal, as you know, is to help people save money, save time, uh, so that you understand what you're getting into before you start to watch a movie. All right, have a fantastic day. Visit me on Patreon if you've got a minute and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.